Good afternoon and welcome to Spirit and New Ministries. I'm Pastor Charles Young. Thank you for joining me for our Wednesday Bible study. We are studying the topic, Blessed Obedience. And we're going to continue with our study tonight as we begin. Let us start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this glorious day that you've given us. We thank you for the opportunity to open your word. We pray that you would speak to our hearts, allow us to apply your truth to our living. And for that, Lord, we give you our thanks. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, God bless you. Welcome. Thank you for joining me this evening. We are looking at this topic, Blessed Obedience, and we are now in our fifth and final lesson for this topic. And we started a couple of weeks ago talking about the apostles' perspective to obedience, and we're going to continue that as we started our study. We did a chronological study beginning in the book uh, or the Old Testament books, uh, and we made our way now into the New Testament, and we looked at different perspectives uh, with respect to this topic of obedience. And God does have a particular perspective about obedience, and he shared that through different groups of people, uh, through the prophets, through priests. Now through the New Testament, he also did that through the apostles. And we are now looking at this uh, apostles' perspective. We also saw where Jesus gave his perspective with respect to obedience. <coughs> Excuse me. And so tonight we will continue in the apostles' perspective in obedience. And tonight we're going to begin with a couple of passages out of the book of Hebrews. So if you'll join me in going to Hebrews, the fifth chapter, we're going to look at verse 9. And again, we are looking at the apostles, and as they wrote, as God had given them uh, directive by means of the Holy Spirit to give information to the saints at that time, this was at the, during the apostolic age, the beginning of the New Testament church. And so God was giving the New Testament testament christians the new saints the body of christ he was giving them information about obedience and why it was so important why it was necessary and so now the writer of hebrews now gives his perspective and shares this truth with the saints hebrews chapter 5 verse 9 i'm reading from the english standard version and that will be the version we'll be using for the balance of this evening there in chapter Five in the ninth verse it says and being made perfect he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him and being made perfect we're talking about Jesus Christ he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him everyone who obeys and surrenders their heart to Jesus Christ recognizing him as the Son of God, the one who provided salvation at the cross at Calvary, who shed his blood, who rose from the grave on the third day, ascended to the right hand of the Father, and will come back on that day when God gives the directive. At that point, those who obey and submit to that biblical truth, it says, he provides salvation. He is the source of salvation to all who obey him. Also in Hebrews, when you look at the 11th chapter and the 8th verse, here it refers to an Old Testament personality. And it says there, By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. And this was a wonderful example of how Abraham, and because he trusted God, and because he was obedient to God's leading, how God blessed him, and he became uh, the father of faith of the Old Testament. Abraham, because of his faith in trusting God and being obedient, even where God was telling him to go to a land, and Abraham didn't even know where he was going, but he trusted God. He was obedient to the leading of God, and therefore God provided that land that he would give to the children of Israel, the land of Canaan. We now move to another Old or New Testament passage, uh, 
And the next few passages we're going to look at is out of the book of James. And James the Apostle writes very specifically to those saints uh, who were having difficulty in their faith and they were finding themselves facing challenges. And so as James was writing to them, he was also encouraging them about being obedient. And here he says in James chapter 1 in the 22nd verse, there James declares, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. I'll read that again. He says, but be doers of the word. And that being doers of the word means be obedient to the word. Read what the word says, adhere to what it says, apply the truth of God's word to our living, and then live it out, walk it out on a daily basis. Allow us to be doers of the word and not just hearers. It's one thing to hear the word of God and know that the word of God is right, know that it's true, know that it is powerful. It cuts as a two-edged sword and all of that. We know that that's true. It's one thing to know it or to believe it or to understand it. It's a whole nother thing to actually do it. And that doing of the word of God is that obedience. That's what God is pleased with. That's what God moves us to operate out of that obedient spirit that says be doers of the word and not just hearers because if we're only hearers of the word and we're not following up our hearing with action then we're just deceiving ourselves and that's what the writer of Hebrews is saying to them there that if you're just going to hear the word of God and just you know read it or you'll just hear it uh, in a teaching format or in a sermonic format and then just not yield to it then you're just deceiving yourself you're just not living in a way that's honorable before the Lord James also reveals in the 25th verse of that same first chapter there James says but the one who looks into the perfect law the law of liberty and perseveres being no hearer who forgets but a doer who acts he will be blessed in his doing. He goes on to say, but the one who looks into the perfect law, into the word of God, that law of liberty, the Bible, all of God's word, and the person who looks at that perfect law, who reads the law, who comes to an understanding of God's word, who perseveres, who continues to walk out the truth of God's word, being no hearer who forgets, because we can hear something and not remember it or not cling to it, not adhere to it. The person who is not just a hearer, but the person who is a doer, because somebody who just hears the word of God, they can forget it or they can decide not to subscribe to it or not to believe it, and they can go on about their business. But the person who is not just a hearer, but the person who is a doer, one who actually acts upon the word of God, who lives it out on a daily basis, James says that person will be blessed in his or her doing. That person will reap the benefits. They will be blessed out of them being faithful enough to be able to walk out and live out and trust God's word so that they actually are acting on the word of God. James goes on and he says in the fourth chapter, he says in verse 7, he says, submit yourselves therefore to God. And then he follows that up by saying, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Now, in this passage, James deals with a variety of realities. First of all, he says submit. And that submit means to give oneself under or give oneself to or submit oneself under a particular rule or precedent. And so he's saying submit yourself, therefore, to God. Give yourself over to God. Yield yourself over to God, to God's word, to God's way, to the, the spirit of God. 
Give yourself over, yield yourself therefore to God, and in doing so, he says, resist the devil. If we're rendering and giving ourselves over to God, if we're reading God's word and we're adhering to his word, we are grasping it, we are applying ourselves to God's word, then there is a much, much greater chance that we're going to live a life that is pleasing before God and therefore resist the devil his devices, his schemes, his attacks, because the devil is real. We need to realize that. And James is saying that not only is the devil real, but we have the ability to resist the devil. And we resist the devil by submitting ourselves to the word of God. That's obedience. When I'm obedient to God's word, when I'm reading, when I'm studying, and I'm doing so in order that I might learn what God's word says and how it applies to my living, then I'm living in a way that honors God and therefore I can resist the attacks, the schemes, and the devices of the devil. Why? Because the devil will come at us. That is his job. The scripture says that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he wants to do. And so knowing that reality, in living a life pleasing before God, if I submit myself, if I surrender myself to the things of God, then I can resist the devil. And when I do that, James says that the devil has no other choice but to flee. And I don't know about you, but that's how I want to live. I want to live where the devil does not have any rule or reign in my life, when I can live in a way that I have mastery over the devil and he doesn't have any mastery over me. I can resist him, and he has to flee. And, beloved, we need to really get on board with that because so many of us just live defeated lives because we think that the devil is all-powerful. Now, true, he is powerful if we let him be, but we don't have to allow the devil to have power or to have rule or reign in our lives. If we resist him by being obedient to the word of God, by submitting, as James says, to the rule of God, to that law of liberty, if we do that, then the devil has no choice but to flee. That gives us rule, that gives us reign, that gives us mastery and dominion over the adversary, over the devil, over, the, over Satan, whoever you want, however you want to refer to him, we have the ability to have dominion and to live a life that is pleasing before God. Somebody ought to say amen to that because that's just true. And that's what the Word of God says. James says it very clearly. If we submit ourselves to God, resist the devil, he has to flee. We now move to the next apostle, which is the apostle Peter. And Peter has a couple of very powerful passages here for us. First Peter, the first chapter, we're going to look at verse 14. First Peter 1, 14. And there, Peter really follows up on what James uh, and the Hebrew writer were saying. He follows up by saying in verse 14, as obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. Listen to what he's saying here, as obedient children. So he's qualifying how we're living. We're living as obedient children. We're living by adhering to the word of God, by living according to the word of God, the spirit of God. And he says, do not be conformed. In other words, don't give in and don't allow ourselves to conform or to be about the business that we used to be about in our former living, in our former sin, in our former ignorance. He said, there was a time when you were ignorant. You were living in ignorance. That was your former life. Don't conform to that. Don't go back to that. Don't acquiesce back to the way that you used to be. But as an obedient child of God, as obedient man and woman of God, you can walk in ways that are pleasing before God by not conforming back to the old way of your old ignorance. And he says to be obedient means that we can walk in the authority authority of God's word, which means that I don't have to live the way that I used to live. I don't have to go back and live or think and behave in the way that I used to before 
I became a new creature in Christ. By becoming a new creature in Christ, I now have the authority, I have the power, I've got the strength of God's Holy Spirit in my life so that I don't have to live the way that I used to live. And that's what Peter is saying. He goes on in his second letter in the first chapter, there in verses 10 and 11, Peter says something very powerful. He says, therefore, brothers, so right there, we know that he's talking to the saints. He's talking to the Christian. He's talking to the men, and he's saying, therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election. Be ever so diligent. Be all the more diligent. He's talking to the Christians. Make sure that you confirm your calling and your election. That what God has called us to. He's called us unto righteousness. We are the elect. We are the ones who God has called to salvation. We are the ones who, because we believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, His shed blood, the sacrifice that He made at Calvary, His resurrection, the uh, dispensing of the Holy Spirit that we now have who lives inside of us, because of all of those things, he says, just make sure, make certain that your calling and that your election is sure. He says, for if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. If we continue to be obedient, to live according to God's word, to live according to the precepts and the principles that are expressed in the 66 books of the Bible, if we do that, he says, we will never fall. We will never find ourselves at a disadvantage. But we have to have the quality of God's word as the foundation on which we stand. We need to have the confirmation of our calling and our election. We have to be certain about it. We have to be sure. Nobody ought to be able to come to you and confuse you about your calling and your election. The fact that you are a Christian. The fact that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That you believe that he came in order to provide salvation for the world because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish. And that's why he says you'll never fall. If you trust that Jesus is the son of God and that he came to give us salvation, he did it by his work at the cross and he did it by his resurrection from the grave and his ascension to the right hand of the Father. If we believe and trust on that, and we live by that every single day without exception, without compromise, he says that you will never fall if we live by those qualities, if we stand on those principles and govern ourselves by those standards. Now look at what he says in verse 11. Peter goes on to say, for in this way there will be richly, we, he said, for in this way there will be richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He says, by living this way, by adhering to these principles, by making sure that our calling and our election is sure, by standing on the word of God, he says, these practices will keep us from falling. But he says, for in this way, we're going to be richly provided entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He says, our entrance is going to be secured. Our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Our names are written in heaven. As long as we are firm in our faith, we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. We claim Jesus as our Savior. We know that we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. So we have the ability to do this. God doesn't just give us the directive and then leave us to fend for ourselves. He equips us. He empowers us. He gives us all that we need by means of the Holy Spirit and by his word for us to live victoriously and we can walk in obedience. That's a great thing that God loved us enough that not only did he save us, not only does he call us his elect and that he's given us a calling to walk holy and righteous before him, but he has also equipped us and empowered us with what it takes for us to walk and to live a life of obedience. That's a gracious and an all-loving and all-powerful God who loves us that much that he equips us, and then because of our belief and standing on God's word, he provides us entrance into the very kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's how Peter gives his perspective with respect to this obedience. He says, in being obedient, God provides for us the entrance into the kingdom. That there's nothing that can stand in the way. 
nothing that can obstruct our entrance into the kingdom, nothing that can prohibit us from being in the very presence of God. And so we can stand firm and be assured that because of our faith in Christ Jesus that we have entrance into the kingdom. Our last apostle that we're going to talk about tonight is the Apostle John. And we're going to see several passages where he gives us, again, his perspective with respect to this obedience. And how, as we live obediently, we're blessed. We're blessed because God has provided the means and he's given us what we need in order for us to live in ways that honor God. Look at what he says in 1 John, the second chapter, and the 17th verse. There he says, and the world is passing away along with its desires. But whosoever does the will of God abides forever. That is cause for celebration. This world is passing away, and it is actually happening. We see how things are deteriorating, the condition of our society, our government, our our economy, we see things that are just kind of going downhill, uh, relations between people, things that are happening at a rate where uh, justice is not being served and people are just uh, in such a, a bad and negative state on a variety of fronts. And so we see that this world is passing away with its desires. This world is gravitating towards sin at such an alarming rate, and it's passing away. And this is happening right before our eyes. But notice what John says. He says, this world is passing away along with its desires. It's, it's carnal nature desires. And people are gravitating toward those things. The word of God is being looked at uh, with a jaundiced eye, so to speak. People would rather believe fables. They would rather believe lies than believe the truth. And because of that, that is symbolic and representative of how this world is just passing away and passing away with its desires. John says, but whosoever, whoever does the will of God, in spite of the fact that this world is passing away, in spite of the fact that it's passing away with its evil and carnal desires, he says, but the person who does the will of God, in other words, the person who lives and walks in obedience, the person who does the will of God abides forever, will live forever, will have eternal rest with God forever. Even after this world passes away, and it's going to pass away, the person who does the will of God by walking in obedience will abide with God forever. That is good news. That is cause for celebration and knowing that, that we have the ever-loving, gracious, merciful, kind, and compassionate God that gives us this promise. He gives us the promise that whoever does his will will live for him and live with him forever. John continues in the fifth chapter and the third verse. He continues this perspective. He says, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. In other words, we walk in obedience. We keep the word of God. We live the word of God. This is our love for God. If we really love God, then we will keep his commandments. If we love God, we will walk and live according to his word. Our love for God is being demonstrated by our, our willingness to be obedient to his commandments. You can't have one without the other. We can't have loving God and we're saying that we love God and that we, we want to be with God and we want to uh, walk uh, close to God, but we're not going to keep his commandments. It doesn't work that way. If I really, really love God, then I'm going to not only love his commandments, but I'm going to keep them. I'm going to obey them. Why? Because his commandments are not difficult. They are not burdensome, is what John says. And then finally, when we look at our last passage for the night and for our study, we're going to look at John's second letter and the first chapter and the sixth verse. There John says, and he really confirms what he just said in the fifth chapter. He says, and this is love. 
that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, just as you have heard from the beginning, so that you should walk in it. John closes by giving us a confirmation of what he had said prior. He said, this is love, that we should walk according to his commandments. And that's really just a repetition of what he says in his first epistle, the fifth chapter and the third verse that we just read a moment ago. He says, and this is love. This is what love looks like. This is what love sounds like. This is what love is, that we walk according to the commandments. If we really love God, if we really have given our lives to Christ, and if we really are surrendered and submitted as James talked about, then we will keep his commandments. We will walk according to those commandments. We will live according to those commandments. We will think according to those commandments because this is the commandment just as we've heard from the beginning, so that we should walk in them. In other words, so that we should adhere, we should submit to them, we should live them out on a day-to-day -day basis. And God gives us the ability to do that. And in doing so, we live lives that are pleasing before God, and we receive the eternal reward because of our obedience. I want to thank you for joining me over these weeks as we looked at this passage uh, these passages of Scripture as it talked about blessed obedience. Obedience is blessed unto God. It's blessed for the children of God. And because of that, God renders us the blessedness of eternal life through our obedience unto Christ. I pray that your hearts have been encouraged. I pray that your spirits have been enlightened. And we'll get back together again uh, on another study that's upcoming. We're going to be together again on February the 23rd. That's two Wednesdays from now, and we'll start a brand new study in the Word of God. Let's, con let's close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we again come before you, and we're thankful for your Word. Thank you for giving us good information about blessed obedience, about how to live in ways that are pleasing before you, and in ways that will render us life eternal. Father, I pray that you would bless all the hearers, those who have been faithful in our study. Continue to bless them, give them divine wisdom and understanding, help them to apply your truth to living and to live victoriously. And for that, Father, we offer you our thanks and our praise. It's this prayer that I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Again, thank you for joining me here at Spirit of, Min Spirit of New Ministries. I'm Pastor Charles Young. Please join us again. Remember to join us on Sunday mornings at 1015 that we could come together and worship and celebrate the goodness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We'll see you soon. Thank you for joining us at Spirit of New Ministries. <laughs>